Hello everyone, welcome to Life City Library. This is your host, Lai Yosh. Uh, excuse me for the noise if you hear anything. Me and my friends are having a sushi party and I'm really supposed to be over there, so, uh, yeah. So, we're having a change of topics in the videos. Um, it's very clear that I'm very lousy with keeping a continuous streak of, like, three or four videos. I've done satisfactory with some other videos in the past and often unsatisfactory with many other videos. I really need to keep that up. I'm sorry. But for today, I have you a video that's kind of for my own benefit, honestly, because this video is about perseverance. I guess you can say how to stay motivated. So many of us are familiar with people persevering through adversities and tough times. On TV, we have Superman, Captain America, Thor, and that one scene in Infinity War. These people whose greatest superpower is punching a purple alien with magic gems. Yeah, sorry, this topic is kind of getting old. But yes, their most notable superpower is persevering. Fictional characters like Captain America and many more who's, uh, who essentially pushes through tough deeds or tough times and accomplish Herculean tasks. And we all want to be like them, right? It is super true that these people are very inspirational. And it's also true that there are a lot of these motivational videos on YouTube talking about stuff like never giving up or being hungry to take that achievement or something or something like that and getting fired up by watching these videos is one thing but actually pushing through that task when we don't see desirable achievement is a different story right like how many of you started going to the gym or something but then lost motivation and stopped when we found out that it takes time to get the desirable toned and muscular body or figured out that with any type of difficult tasks or goals motivation alone does not lead you to success and there's a lot of scientific methods that does not make you rely on motivation and I want to talk about these topics but yeah if I do I'll be spoiling some of my future videos but yes for this particular video we'll be learning how to put the bandages on when we trip and fall and hurt ourselves we'll be talking about how our brain processes failure and yet pushes through We'll be talking about the neuroscience of perseverance. So today's study is done at Kyoto University in Japan in 2023, and according to the study that used mice samples, they found that these mice produced dopamine and produced effort when doing a task. This was an already known fact that is not particular to just mice. We have this too. The surprising part was that this was done inside the neural system of these mice right after they've experienced failure. Let's take a look at how this was the case. With many things in life like work, sports, and studying, we tend to set and strive for goals that are slightly above our usual capacities. That's how we and our species as a whole have advanced until today. And we also know very well that actually coming out of this tunnel successfully is often very difficult. And we actually very rarely do come out of this successfully. Achieving difficult tasks is hard. And very often, as a result, we face the reality of our actual capacity. You thought you could achieve this thing that you're doing, whether because you need more practice or more knowledge or anything of that sort. At this moment, you are not able to accomplish this goal. We get betrayed of our expectations. But we also know that many of us do not give up when we see an unsatisfying result. And we often try again and again and again and again until at last we accomplish our goals. The ability to persevere through adversities and failures and hardships can be said that the main reason why humanity has survived and thrived until today, and like I said before, this is the case with many other organisms as well. Lions don't give up hunting when they failed once, fish don't give up mating when they failed once, and so it can be said that every organism, through one way or another, had this common function to persevere and not give up when they fail. And despite all this, the scientific research on this behavioral mechanism has not been studied that well until very recently. Plenty of past studies have shown that this effect is real and have shown that whether or not we accomplish a difficult task or not affects the neural cell dopamine. If we accomplish or exceed expectation in some task, our brain sees an increase in dopamine release. And we fail or underachieve, the dopamine release decreases. I'm sure many of us already know this, but with this info in mind, we begin to wonder, how do we recreate motivation when we fail at the task? How can we neurologically 
likely overcome failure. To study this, the research team conducted an experiment based on the hypothesis that maybe there's a type of dopamine cell that activates when there's a betrayal of expectation. Maybe this undiscovered dopamine cell activates more precisely when we underachieve. This experiment used mice to figure out if they can continue persevering despite experiencing uncertain results. The team created this machine where the mice would pull on a lever which produced a sound. And after pulling on the lever once more, a drop of sweet juice aka the reward would come out. However, there was a variety of these sounds, like sometimes it was a ding, sometimes it was a beep, and sometimes it was it was a it was a gong or something. If the sound was a ding, then there was a 100% chance of the mice getting the reward. If the sound was a beep, then there was a 50% chance of the reward, and if it was a gong, then there would be 0% chance. And if the mice didn't get the reward, they got to try again. The experiment was designed to train the mice so that despite them not getting the reward all the time and their expectations getting betrayed, they would not linger on the failure and try again and persevere. And eventually, through many trials, these mice were able to develop a mind that does not give up due to failures. And additionally, the researchers measured the neuro neural activity of these mice and studied how their neural state was adapting to the failures and the betrayal of expectations. And as a result, they discovered for the first time ever a dopamine cell that increased its activity despite seeing the betrayal of effort. These mice were developing a motivational brain cell despite seeing failures. Dragon Ball style. They also figured out where specifically in the brain these activity was discovered. It was in the nucleus accumbens where they found this process of increased dopamine activity after experiencing an expectation betrayal. Nucleus accumbens is the area in our brain that connects motivation with action. When you're motivated to read a book or do a push-up, the neural activity or the order to do a push-up goes through the nucleus accumbens and lights up to make the bodily action. And this nucleus accumbens, according to the study, is basically a chunk of neural cells that manages your reactions from things like reward, pleasure, and your continued action based on that reward. When you see results in your workouts, so you start to truly enjoy working out and continue this activity, during this process, this neural spark to continue the action, to continue working out, passes through the nucleus accumbens. Discovering all this, the researchers thought that they could control this entire process. So what they did was that the researchers stimulated these rats' activities of their dopamine movements through their neural pathways and saw how these sparks reached the nucleus accumbens. The movements were influenced so that it would happen before, uh, before these rats felt the emotion of expectation betrayal, before their brain felt, ah, I thought I would get the reward. Before this happened, the activity within the dopamine neural pathway that led to the nucleus accumbens was stimulated. By doing so, the rats were able to overcome the feeling of getting their expectations betrayed. Because the rats were able to successfully say, well, I wasn't able to get the reward, but it's okay, let's move on to the next trial. They were able to persevere through failures. Interesting, isn't it? I'm pretty certain that a lot of you have had the experience where you worked hard on something, but that effort didn't bear fruit and it didn't lead you to where you wanted. But you kept on trying, you put the disappointment behind yourself and moved on to the next task. Well, according to the study, this is a legit function that the brain can do. Even though we fail many times, our brain is built to push through and keep trying. Persevering is really difficult because we lose our motivation or the will to fight as we face reality and we see failures time after time. But the study made a revolutionary discovery that kind of gave a new outlook to what we previously thought as how our brains functioned and thus gave a new outlook to life and how we view our our goals. Of course, the individual level to how much we can endure hardships and persevere differs among people. Some people might give up really easily while others might not. Different cars have different amounts of mileage capacity that they can run on. Despite all this, this study was able to uncover the essential mechanism as to how we can put gas into the car tank. This study provided a very important technique for us to persevere through hardships by using scientific and psychological methods. With this knowledge and understanding, me, you, and everyone listening to this podcast might be able to accomplish unbelievable tasks and endeavors and witness achievements we've yet to see.
Okay, so that was it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and while you're at it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel Life Study Library. Each one of your support is so greatly appreciated. And now let's talk about what you can do next. Some options you can take after finishing this video is to watch the recommended videos I'm about to introduce. Today's recommended videos from my channel that also talks about these interesting and fun science and psychology is a video called How to Make a Habit of Healthy Eating. So our diet, what we eat, is a major, major, major part of the three most important factors that we can use to improve our lives. If we want to change our lives for the better, the order of steps we should take is fixing our diet, fixing our sleep, and fixing our physical exercise. So many studies in the past have shown that these are the order and the recipe for a better and satisfying life. And specifically with eating, this is the number one most important part of your life that you need to improve because what you eat literally makes you. If all you eat are junk food, then you'll be so sorry for yourself when you look at another person who kept a healthy and a high quality diet. I know I'm not the first one who came up with this quote, and you also know that your mom is neither the one who came up with it, but it's true when people say your body is your greatest asset. But I also understand that simply knowing this fact and actually keeping a habit of healthy eating are two different sides of the coin. And the topic of how you can make and continue a healthy eating habit seems like a never ending topic of discussion that humans have. But in this video that I have for you, you can learn about how you can stop eating stuff like cookies or ice creams and grab some of those healthy veggies. And a little side note that this method that I'll show you has nothing to do with motivating yourself or resisting the temptation. Actually, motivation or resisting temptation often leads you to failure when trying to accomplish anything because these are emotional tactics. It speaks to your emotion. Not a lot of people actually understand this, but in order to accomplish stuff like this, actually, you must change your behavioral lifestyle. What's that, you ask? Well, there's actually multiple definitions to this, but one of them I have for you in this video has to do with who you eat with. And by the way, uh, just making sure that you don't assume this to be as like, oh, that means you should only eat with people who are already disciplined about their eating habits. That's, that's not what I mean when I say you need to change who you eat with. Then what's the answer? Well, you can figure out the mystery by watching this video. So check it out if you're interested. It's in the description. So yeah, check it out. And then for my second video recommendation on how you can improve your sleep, this one is called Scientifically Proven the best sound to use as an alarm. This one talks about sleep, the second most important criteria to improving your life. Well, kind of, because this particular video talks about how to effectively wake up from sleeping. Actually, for this category of sleep in specifically, I recommend you watch these two videos as one package. You should first watch the video called, When is your ideal time for concentration? Finding your chronotype among these six categories. You've probably seen people who can wake up at like 4am sharp and ready to take on the day while you're still trapped in your dreams. Or people who can stay up until 4am while you're already trapped in your dreams. They might seem like they're doing more work than you and you might feel like you need to do the same thing as them. Uh, don't do this. Don't try to stay up super late or wake up super early to do work. At least don't do this and expect to produce effective and efficient results. Why is this? Well, to put it simply, you can't do this and they can do that because you and this other person have different chronotypes. What are chronotypes? If you're interested in knowing what this is and why it's important to know when considering whether you can become the next level night owl or the next level early bird. If this seems like you, then these two videos are for you. If you want to learn the science of sleeping and waking up, then these two videos are down in my description, so check them out. And lastly, exercise. For this concept, I recommend you watch the video called uh, Unconscious Activity That Is Killing You. Parenthesis cannot be improved by exercise. Yeah, I know I kind of give you like a curveball. I thought about talking about like an effective exercise method or like talk about that one exercise sh you should do or something like that. But I thought it would be better for me to talk about the other aspect, the other side of your physical health. In this video, I talk about the one activity that pretty much every single one of you have done, in fact are probably doing right now, about this physical activity 
that is secretly making you unhealthy. This tends to be a huge gut punch to a lot of people, so I'm not going to spoil it anymore. But trust me when I say you have definitely, definitely done this physical activity many, many times in your life. And my single message to you is to stop doing that activity before it's too late. If you want to know what this activity is, then click the link to this video in my description. And now let's talk about the books you should read. Now for uh, today, I put links to a lot of books and we can't really discuss all of them. So I'll just introduce one of them. This book is called Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McEwen. So many studies in the past have pretty much determined that the reason why we can't change our lives is due to one of three reasons. Because we don't have knowledge, because we don't have money, and because we don't have time. The reason why you're unhealthy and overweight, you might be able to give a lot of excuses like, uh, my boss at work won't let me leave until midnight and I don't think there are any ways to change that. Well, did you know that there are many psychological tactics you can use, for example, make rapport with your boss so that your boss will be more forgiving or will be more willing to let you go earlier. That's something you can know and improve about your knowledge. If it's all your fault and you're just a slow worker but you have to deal with it because you're, you know, you're slow so that's your fault. Well, you won't probably become a better and fast worker within the short amount of time, but you should notice that you might be wasting time after work by immediately going on your phone watching meaningless and unenjoyable but addictive social media. If you don't think you have enough time, well, there you go. By eliminating that wasteful behavior and deleting the social media, you can make time for yourself to do other fun stuff like like indulge in your hobbies or watch a movie or something. Well, what if I'm poor and I don't have the money to educate myself? The fact that you're watching this video right now means you probably do have some amount of money. Like you're not poor to the point where you don't have a single penny, right? And you should also do that if you do have some amount of money or income, like even like a single $20 bill. You can buy the book I recommended and there you go. That's a good place for you to start. Your body, your health, and your knowledge is the greatest treasure that you have. Well, that was my video and book recommendation, so you should go check all of them out. And last but not least, don't forget to click the like button for this video and make sure to subscribe to Life Study Library. This has been your host, Lai Yosh, and I'll see you in another video.